Empowering African Farmers with Data. Good day to our jury and thank you for allowing us to present to you the future of artificial intelligence in the agricultural sector, or simply put, smart farming. We hope to inspire you as we delve into the beautiful continent of Africa and specifically focusing on South Africa and provide them with a better and more sustained tomorrow. With our idea, we aim to drive agricultural transformation, but with the usage of technology. Here before you, I present to you the footprints. The team consists of Ariana Bianchi, who you can see on your screen, and she's from Italy. Maite Gonzalez, who is from Spain and contributed to this project and currently doing an internship abroad. And myself, Ariel Ardinoa, who is from South Africa. And we are three international business management students studying here in Belgium. Our idea will focus on SDG number nine, which is industry, innovation and infrastructure, which is the foundation of every successful community, which will meet the future challenges by innovative, sustainable technologies and access to universal information. Now, before we look at Africa specifically, we would like to explain to you some uh, future and current complications that the world is facing. By 2050, as is shown in this graph, there will be 9.6 billion people on this earth. This means that in 30 years, the global population will increase by 2.4 billion individuals. In today's world, farmers are currently facing several complications, which are the consequences of the usage of herbicides and chemicals. In fact, the employment of these types of products will cause not only the degradation of soil, but it can also affect the wildlife, the quality of both water and air, and generating health problems. Without altering agricultural practices and urgently finding ways to preserve soil, the global food supply will start to look precocious. Now, let's have a more in-depth look at the African continent. In 2017, Africa spent 64.5 billion of dollars on importing food. This number is estimated to rise up to $110 billion by 2025, weakening African economies, diminishing its agriculture, and exporting jobs from the continent. Agriculture plays an important role in African economies and also in the daily lives of the majority of Africans, accounting for some 60% of jobs. This is why this huge amount of imports cause a strong negative effect on the continent. However, much of Africa's agricultural land is currently underutilized. And due to this low productivity, the sector accounts for only 65% of African GDP. This causes both high human and high economic costs. If nothing is done, the number of extremely poor people will rise up to 550 million by 2025. Now, the question is, what should the continent do? But more importantly, what can we do in order to provide help and support? We need to prioritize agriculture. We need more efficient farming techniques and equipment in order to rapidly reinforce Africa, to diversify, to diversify its economies and revive its rural areas. How? By focusing on five main visions. Light up and power Africa. Feed Africa. Industrialize Africa. Integrate Africa. And improve the quality of life of Africans. Those so-called the high five Africa are the accelerators for Africa's development. If the continent focuses on these high fives, it will achieve about 90% of its um, SDGs. Now, one might think that AI is probably too far-fetched and too futuristic, but let us explain to you how food security concerns have pushed for innovative technological solutions in farming in order to guarantee efficiency. And let's stop avoiding the inevitable. I'll now explain to you the system of smart farming. It all starts with big data. The system will be run by big data, which will systematically extract information. It's basically seen as machine learning, AI, which is trained on big data sets and then teaches itself. The algorithms will teach itself and flag out something as harmful insects before the farmer would identify that there's a problem. The algorithms, of course, will be filled with agricultural specifics. The next thing is data which is stored in the main server. All sampling solutions from this device will be provided by the main server. The server will be provided with data that will provide the drones, tractors and devices with um, big data sets. The high tech computer will determine the various important parameters and techniques that the farmer should take. 
We then go to the drones, tractors and hand devices. Farmers will have the assistance, assistance of um, farm hand devices, tractors or scan droning. The drones, tractors and hand devices will be built into image recognition software and will automatically recommend the control options back to the user, th that being, of course, the farmer. This AI device will also be, um, you know, will be feasible for um, every farmer and will give them a natural language toolkit for the farmer to understand everything about the system and what they should do. Adriana, could you please give me an example or um, one of the three options that you'd like me to explain how it would work? Um, maybe the hand device, with the app. Okay. So as Ariana just mentioned, the app and the hand device. Um, the hand device will be a mobile app that can detect any plant diseases on the crops and the farmer can act much faster and prevent the situation of potentially affecting a whole year's crops. The farmer simply needs to place the camera on the plant or the crop and, and the hand device will send the info back to the main server where it is analyzed and afterwards the server sends back which measures the farmer will need to take in order to control the pathogens, the pests or the water regulations. The application is also feasible for um, the agricultural robots and the drones control. Then we go to image recognition. With the sensors from, dot, from the data collection, it will be able to measure the soil temperature, wind speed, um, propose spraying and calculations, detect plant diagnosis and treatments, identify the plant damages such as diseases and pest damage. It is basically a complete scanning and detection of the crop's health. And then we go to the execution. After all that has been done, the farmer can both manually or automatically, depending on the required approach that the farmer will have to take, and act on the solution. It gives them the required knowledge in order to ensure that their crops are healthy. With all of that, we see that there, the four pillars of sustainability can be achieved. The first one is sustainable um, social, um, social sustainability, which aims at preserving social capital and the framework of society. The next one we have is human sustainability, which aims to maintain and improve human capital in society by investing in knowledge, skills, education systems and access to services. The third one is economic sustainability, which aims at maintaining the capital intact and will improve the standard of living of society. And the last one we have is environmental sustainability, which aims at improving human welfare through protecting the natural resources and capital. Adriana, could you maybe tell us the natural resources that we should be protecting? Uh, yes, um, so there is air, water, land, and minerals. Yes, and this will ensure the needs of the population and without risking and compromising the needs of the future generations. So now, how smart farming will be of good use? We believe that with our idea, there are many benefits that interconnect with meeting and combating many of the sustainable development goals that should be achieved by the year 2030. One of the important um, goals that we would like to achieve is eradicating poverty. And with our idea, we believe that we can do so. There will be income that will be generated in the economy. People will have jobs. People will be taught with education, with skills, with the knowledge and improve the economy for themselves and for their country. And we see that all of this has a cause and effect relationship which connects them all. We first have land redistribution, which is currently um, we, we're currently South Africa is going through a situation of land redistribution, which is a very complex program. It is where land is. It's a, basically a land reform where land is being seized from um, from certain farmers and is redistributed to the disadvantaged population or ethnic groups. About 90% of the farms which have been redistributed are not productive at all. And this the government itself has said. Almost 60,000 square kilometers of land has so far been redistributed. The next one is inadequate access to information. Many farmers have argued that they have been struggling to get the resources and the skills in order to develop their land. This is where our idea comes into play actually. It is clear to say that commercial farming is a capital intensive business. One of the make or break aspects of the situation is inadequate access to information. Many farmers who try to farm face a dearth of information about critical aspects such as accessible information on planting practices and techniques. The next one we have is learning and empowerment. 
our idea creates empowerment, intensive learning and training advantages with economic empowerment and combats that issue of climate change as well, and also reduces the fear of not having enough food for everyone. The next one we have is combat climate change and protecting the land. The WWF um, reported on farming facts and figures and said that the country's agricultural sector is faced with serious problems, such as the depleted soil, polluted and overextracted water resources and labor disconnect and an added, added factor of climate change, which redraws the whole cultural agri agricultural map of what goes where, when and at what quantity. About 638,000 South Africans are formally employed in the agricultural sector and 30 to 40 percent of the food is being wasted in every step of the food chain. 25 percent of the soil is accessible to soil erosion. Five million hectares of cultivated land is seriously acidic from over fertilization. One third of South Africa's 320 dams are contaminated because of phosphates from fertilizers. Poor agricultural practices and unregulated expansions threaten key biodiversity hotspots and also reminding you that 90% of the land that has been redistributed has had a failure rate. The last one that we have is boosting the economy. With AI introduced in South Africa's agricultural sector, these are and managed so that the high fives for transforming Africa can be achieved, those high fives that Ariana had previously mentioned. This smart farming will boost productivity, enhance education, but also ensure the Earth's natural resources are not damaged or depleted. So now you're probably wondering, can this be possible? The answer is yes. Three existing companies are already investing in this sector by using artificial intelligence in order to improve the performance. The first company is called Blue River Technology with C and Spray, which uses machines and tractors in order to spray herbicides only where needed and with exactly what's needed. The second company is PEAT, who created Plantix, an app that scans your crop and diagnoses the treatment to apply. And then the third company is called Aware, which helps farmers plan their farming activities better by understanding the weather trends. As you can see, AI is possible. Our device will help the farmers to better understand the land and to maximize, maximize the profit from it. We believe that this technology will highly benefit the country by providing enough resources in order to lower the trade deficit. With the global population soaring, we see that technology can help the crisis in the agricultural sector and AI has a huge potential to deliver the needed solutions. That those AI-based solutions will ensure farmers produce more output with less input and improve the quality of this output. The provision of knowledge will ensure smarter ways of irrigation and result in higher yields. Then, as a conclusion, SDG9 can help Africa, and more specifically South Africa, to power up in both scenarios, the social scenario and the economic scenario. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you all. Merci beaucoup.